and uh, myself, Santosh, I take care of the sales and operations for Datagram. As uh, you know, during my uh, earlier stints and any training that I've attended, everybody used to warn me about this particular session after lunch and just before heading towards tea. Uh, so it's always best that we uh, take it a bit easy and, uh, and, and move into this particular session uh, comfortably. So we thought we'd just have an uh, interactive uh, uh, you know, mentee session. So I will just request Manu if you could uh, share the mentee code with the team uh, in the chat box. Or right, So you can just pick it up. Alternately, you can just go to mentee.com and put this code. That would be great. So if you can see, there is this. You can go to mentee.com and put this code. Code eight three one eight seven double six. The link is available in the chat box. Uh, yes. If you're facing any difficulties, please let Santosh or Manu know. Thank you. Oh wow. We've got four responses. Okay. Super lazy. <laughs> I want to honest. Okay, so just give it five more seconds to get some more input. So good to know that there's a lot of these, a lot of people who are excited, happy. I like inquisitive. Neve G1. What can you, uh, whoever, if you feel, if feel free to please share what, what this is. Neve G1 is very, very interesting. Uh, Santosh, your volume is slightly low. Um, could you uh, in increase it? Yeah, is it better? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great, yeah. So excited and good and happy have taken uh, the lead. So yeah, that gives us a lot of energy to move forward. <clears throat> now that we've had a long, uh, you know, impact of Corona, what, what is it that you're really looking forward to the next six months? Are you looking for joint work, go for a vacation? How is it looking like for you? I hope you're able to access the next question. If you have any problem, do mention the chat box. Santosh, it says voting is closed. Voting is closed. It says voting is closed, is it? Okay, then I guess uh, we will just skip this part. But what we actually saw is uh, we saw uh, we saw a lot of happy, um, a lot of happy and excited people. And what we also also saw was how data was gathered and how you managed to visualize it. Um, so with that, I think we are pretty much set for this particular session. <laughs> To bring in a use case which is relatable, I'll draw, um, I'll share share an example of one of our clients uh, who approached us. So these guys, they, they're a bunch of occupational therapists who are based out of Mumbai. Uh, they they try to help children with neurodevelopmental disabilities uh, cope with their day-to-day -day activities. Since they met a reasonable amount of success in Mumbai, they wanted to expand their program to areas outside uh, Mumbai and which are underserved. So they wanted to start, they got uh, inroads into Charkhand where they got to uh, help 50 children. Uh, so the, the, the team that was managing the entire show was sitting out of Bombay and they had a paramedical, they had a paramedical staff which was supporting them on ground in Charkhand. The, the way they had approached this, uh, their program 
was using paper uh, earlier and uh, that data would then get converted into Excel or uh, they would use Google Forms occasionally as required. However, as they were preparing for scale, uh, what was very important was uh, to have real-time dashboard access so that the people sitting out of Mumbai, uh, the SO office, are able to see what's happening and to um, intervene as required. Uh, most of the underserved areas have challenge with respect to data connection and even the field officers may not have the uh, data packs active for them to take things forward. Uh, since most of these field officers, they prefer to have uh, their mother tongue as their primary language, usually an English form becomes a bit of a deterrent. So you need to have forms which have which are capable to manage different languages. And since they are dealing with children, and many of you may be having different beneficiaries, it's important to track data longitudinally to be able to see as to how the ch how that beneficiary is performing over a period of time of your interventions. And finally, you may have different data sets that you are collecting, so you need to correlate these data sets. However, in, in in order to achieve this, what they would have to do is either hire an expert in technology, either build their own app or pay for or uh, pay for a survey application. And this is something which most of us relate to, where um, where there are survey applications which are great. However, they are priced based on users or based on submissions, making them cost ineffective. Apart from the fact that you also need the capacity within your organization to manage uh, the survey application. If you collect data in paper, Excel, Google form, usually they get caught up, uh, you know, caught up in silos and getting deeper analysis of data becomes a bit of bit of a challenge um, real time as well, as well as in uh, from a from a deeper sense. And finally, when it comes to technology, uh, most people who are good with tech are at a very, very high premium right now. So getting, uh, attracting that talent to the social sector, given the resource crunch that we have, becomes a bit of a challenge. So uh, what we put together was to solve all of this, but largely what we said, okay, let us make it really cost competitive and let us support the whole capacity constraint that an organization may have. Um, so that so so we have built a team in house which is supporting organizations build the forms build the dashboard help them with their data as much as possible and that becomes like a long term support this is a real view of how our application looks it is mobile friendly yes it can and most importantly it is access control so you may have program teams you may have m e teams you may have different projects against which you may have different data collection. So there are organizations who are there with us who use us across multiple programs from livelihood to maternal child health to education, depending on what all they uh, what all they want to host, they can host everything on a single application. And they have different data collection form which their team is able to click and take things forward. The most important thing, uh, you know, when, whenever when we did our first project, actually, um, uh, what we and we we were given it, uh, you know, one of the forms that we had to convert had close to 285 questions, and that had to be administered in Bhivandi uh, for people who are familiar with Mumbai, uh, and they did not have any network. Uh, so one of the feedback, so when I when everything got got done, the baseline got done, and I was sitting with the team, and um, most of them were people from the community. They were elated because the forms that they used to carry was to be very bulky. However, when they saw this form, it had a very similar feel when it comes to the look of it. However, because of the way the we had customized it and the optional questions that would pop up, the form was much more concise and they were they were completely they they were they were ecstatic about the whole outcome. Of it because you are able to customize questions, make it conditional, and minimize the 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 errors that usually happen because you have to take that call on the field. Uh, we spoke about longitudinal study. So, if you if in in your case, if you want to monitor a child's progress over a period across multiple forms, 
we uh, you know usually form is a one way traffic but we also are able to pull out data based on the student code and show it to you so that if you want to update or change that particular ratings score or feedback you are able to do it and that can happen across form so um, you know not only are you able to see the macro data in depth but you can deep dive into uh, data at a much more micro level our forms are multilingual so one of the organization that uses across nine states they use three different languages for the same form the person using this form gets to see the language of their comfort however for the more objective questions like you see uh, which are the checklist or the drop downs those get captured in english in the back end making quantitative analysis much simpler at your end so you can have data which other person sees in their local language of comfort but when you save it it becomes it is in english and finally where does this data go this data is managed by us on the google cloud um, instance that we manage the data is made available to you real time these dashboards what what we say is we ask our our organization that work with us we ask them please share your questions that you want answers to they may not be very simple necessarily for example if you have asked a question how many people have bank account that is a a pie chart however if you want to figure out how many people have bank account versus how many people and people uh, are borrowing money then you can probably look at some sort of a correlation so we make that possible as well even the dashboards are access controlled so you can have dashboards different for your different team members depending on their role or projects so last year when the whole um, covid first wave was underway a lot of people jumped in and they did massive contribution in terms of helping the people uh, offering them sanit uh, you know uh, sanitation support food support education support so unicef ran a similar uh, initiative called jeevan rath and they had used our uh, they had used our um, app which they hosted on their site on which you could uh, if you could click on any location you would be able to see what is the work that has happened at that location what i'm trying to say is that you can make the dashboard open and public which could be very useful whenever you are sharing information with various stakeholders that you may be having um at this moment i'll just pause and i'll request manu to share a sample form uh with you in the in the chat box you could use that to yeah he's just shared shared the link i would request you if you could just click on it and try filling it i'll take you through that form as well this will give you an experience please let us know if you guys are uh, facing any trouble uh, with filling the form so this is what the form would look like if you are comfortable with hindi you can switch from the top right you can switch language to hindi and that will change okay i'm assuming everybody has opened this form so what i would request you to do is there are two parts to this form what we have created is a demo form where you are registering a child out of two states the child could be in maharashtra or child could be in up you could register the child and fill up have some dummy data and click on submit that could be the first activity that i would request you to do after which i'll take you through how the update feature works please feel free to ask in case you have any query in the chat box or uh, to me hi the link is not opening it's showing an error error message yeah same here the link is showing an error okay and i know the link again
are you using google chrome or are you using a local uh, Rush, google uh, chrome just uh, give me a minute that link just went down for a sec i'll just bring it back okay google chrome sir okay it should yeah just let let manu come back in a bit for those who who who, uh, who could open this form you can fill it uh, date of birth you can select maybe a previous year can what you share the name again for the form yes yes i will share but i will just wait for manu to just revert in case there are any challenges uh, santosh yeah. the forms are being submitted i think the link is active link is active okay okay great it's not active yet it is just offline so i just need to uh, make it active for the rest of the people who are not able to open it also okay so if you see that the age gets auto populated i hope you guys have observed that same same error okay just uh, people are facing the error just hold on for a bit let uh, you know we just create when i am facing error in the link not opening Okay. Okay. This is for our purpose, please. We just created this for uh, purpose of this particular presentation. So maybe we just need to make some backend adjustments. Manu is working on this. Let me just check. Uh, Santosh, you can just move forward at the presentation. We'll just come back to this so that people are not waiting for this. Okay, so that's fair. So okay, so while Manu is working on this, I'll just move on with the other part of the presentation. Then we can revert to this, right? <laughs> Okay. Uh, so what you see here are uh, is a real is a is an actual picture of Angan volunteers working and using our application in the field. This is uh, feedback from Save the Children about us. FMCH was one of our early clients uh, who we did extensive work for. And yeah, this is from Chaitali from Angan as well. Currently, we are present in across over 10 states. Our app has been used by over 5,000 users, and we have over 5 lakh beneficiaries being surveyed. Some of our clients are these. Okay. So, what in 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 summary, what we are really offering in the application is that. We are solving the problem of collecting the data offline. Um, we, are, we, are, we are managing the entire forms in a manner that you are able to, uh, you know, you know you, you're able to collect data across different languages. It is multilingual. Uh, you're able to track the beneficiaries' progress. It is you can get the longitudinal studies uh, based on it. The dashboards are not just linear dashboards where you where you see uh, where, where you see a certain parameter and you see a slice, you're able to compare different data sets to get further insights. And um, our team is always there to support. So everything that is that is there is created by our team from the dashboards to the form. Access control is one of our major features. And since our app has been tested and has been used by multiple organizations, has been live for, for a very long time, you need not think you did not invest time in building an application because we all know how much time it takes to build an application to test it and to make things go live usually our turnaround time for reverting to our clients is at about 4 days we complete we complete and handover from our end in 4 days time that's how quickly we are able to do and it is cost effective because it is a software as a service platform and not just an application that you have to pay 
a large lump sum. And most importantly, everything is it's an unlimited access as well as submissions. So you need not get worried. And if you, for example, we're working on a uh, we're working on a uh, on a pan India project where there are over ten thousand volunteers who are going to be helping people with the vaccination. So there, there too, we don't have any differential pricing when it comes to user access. The way we have priced it is fairly straightforward. We've got a one-time, uh, we got a one-time set of fee, and this is a special pricing that we have for the Tech for Good community. Um, and after this one-time set of fee, we have a small monthly subscription, which we charge to support you end to end, as well as host your data and to manage everything for you. Right. So at um, so at this point, if you have any questions, you can ask while uh, you know Manu is figuring out that um, form part. Or Manu, if it is done, then we can we can go back to that and then move to the question. Uh, not yet. Okay. Yeah. So if you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to kind of take it. Yeah, Santosh, I do have a couple of questions here. Right. Hi. <clears throat> yeah. Hi. Uh, now, here we are talking about you showed us a form and you said we probably only you know, studies through this would be a very good option to take it up, right? So, uh, this dashboard, what you create, so if we have to maintain, uh, say, data of a uh, few hundreds of youth or children, so probably this could be a good option to go ahead with and can we and as you said longitudinal so which i mean i, I mean we can do follow up say for next two to three years and uh, carry on uh, collecting and capturing information for those particular set of children yeah Could you could you say that again? You you want you you were uh, you were asking whether you can continue to capture data for more children. So two three questions to be very tangible. A. So we can we maintain uh, any number of children data in this one. Second, uh, the fields what we create. I'm sure we can attune it and create the fields as we want and localize and contextualize it. That is second. And uh, third, you said ki, um, so okay, first these two, yeah. So both, both are yes, actually. You can, you can have as many children. So we have got uh, thousands of children who, who are there on, uh, you know, who are on our app and who are managed longitudinally. So yes to that. Yes to both the questions, one. Yeah. What, what was your... And how lengthy the form can be. I mean, of course, we, we do appreciate and understand too. We should not have very lengthy uh, MIS or the data to capture. But otherwise, just if we need to capture a few set of fields, how lengthy or how long that particular form can go up to? Uh, so the largest... How many fields to be very precise? Any limitation on the number of fields you can enter in that form? No, no, there are no limitations. The the largest form that we have handled was close to uh, over three hundred questions, actually, which we which obviously was yeah brought down because of the skip logics. Yeah, so we have handled a lot of questions. Uh, Santosh, you have a couple of questions in the chat box. Right? Yes, yes. So I'll take it. I'll take the first question from Pratik. Okay, saying is the monthly fee subscription okay? Is the size of the database unlimited? How long will you store the data for us? Uh, okay. Um, uh, so, so Pratik, uh, to answer this question, uh, yes, it is a monthly subscription fee based. Okay, uh, there is no limitation on how much data you are able to store. However. We also have provision where you can say store files like PDFs, Excel, Word, um, but uh, not video because video tends to become very large. So apart from video, everything can be stored. 
um, and how long can you store the data with us? It depends on organization. So if you want to stop a certain activity where you don't want to collect the data, but you want to just retain the uh, retain the data, that is something that we can uh, also manage at a at a very very minimal cost. That is something which is possible for collecting the data and showing showing you the data real time. That is something which we anyway shared, and you can also check our website for that information. Right. Is there anything else, Pratik, you want to ask? This data Suppose I conduct a survey now, and uh, for whatever reasons, I want to access this data uh, six months down the line, one year down the line, uh, when I'm doing another set of survey. So then, uh, do I have to store this at my end, or would you also keep it? For a small fee, we will keep it. There's, there's no problem. All right. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, what would be the difference? Like, when you do the Google form thing, right? And then the Google form maybe dal dete and we retain the data, or we retain the data in an Excel sheet. I'm sure you were showing us before, but just to make us understand, what would be the difference? What difference would it make if we retain Excel or usme retain kare and we do it in this? But agar aapko agar real time access karna information ko at any point in time kahi se bhi karna hai aapke team ko agar suppose kya hota hai ki lot of organizations who work for 10 saal kaam karte hai 15 saal kaam karte hai data kafi scattered ho jata hai aur wo jab thoda sa matlab change ko you know they want to monitor change that becomes a bit of a challenge so wo completely organization par hai ki agar aapko uh, data in a structured way mein karna hai, ya aap apne aap pe Excel maintain. If you have, if you, if you have a data, good data management policy, which includes backup, which includes how you store data, I would say that is a great solution where you can have it at your own level. But if you have to outsource that, uh, no, no, no. I was trying to ask you some questions. So I agree. You can structure it and do it and. But outsource can never, but you know, the point is ki how long, how long the recurring cost will continue because I think it would be as long as we retain the data and outsource it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. whenever you feel the need, you can, you can, I mean, whenever you think that is not needed to be maintained with us, you can take it, you can stop it immediately, you can download the data uh, at, at uh, your end and you can keep it. There is no restriction at all. Uh, Santosh, the form is available. If okay. We can okay. Go back okay. To that. okay. So I'll, let me just finish all these questions once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, can the form and dashboard be filled without internet? Uh, yes. The dashboard, uh, the form can be filled without uh, while you're offline. Okay. However, the data will get uploaded only once you have internet. So what happens is field video and they go and collect the data end of the day they come to a place where they have wi-fi access it gets uploaded once it gets uploaded the dashboard dashboard may aapko dik jata hai dashboard dekhne ke liye it is not offline you would need the internet connection i hope i'm able to answer that yes yes thank you thank you so much uh namrata asks can we add skip logics uh, yes of course namrata i think that is one of the main feature a very very significant feature a lot of you can build skip logics uh, you can have skip logic you can customize a uh, string string length for example if you uh, if, if a certain number has to be 16 digit you can have those logics built in uh, you know you can have logic uh, built in where you auto calculate number based on certain certain uh, entry so all of that is possible um, so I hope Namrata that is answered satisfactorily um is it possible to collect qualitative data along with photos yes you can capture qualitative data i'll just show you how it, it uh, reflects in the form uh, in the dashboard yeah so if you are collecting data this yeah, is yeah now i have signature sorry 
अपना अकाउंट नंबर ओके ओके सो यू मे जस्ट हैव टू म्यूट योर माइक्रोफोन uh so look look at all this these are files that have been uploaded so pdf for project 1 okay these are all the pdfs you can click on it you can access the data directly from here and you can have any number of filter you can have date filter you can have project filter everything built in right you can pull in pdfs you can pull in pull in documents which will you know you have to save and pull out so all of that is possible So I hope that was answered satisfactorily. Uh, Sandeep, can we bring the response to the backend database like Salesforce and also validate against Salesforce data? Uh, Sandeep, could you help explain this? Um, you... Yeah. So we uh, we have a whole lot of data already collected, which is the demographic information of let's say students. Now we want to. Uh, bring that into let's say a survey if we want to do a survey or an assessment bring it there show it to the student and ask them to update it and once updated bring it back so that the salesforce becomes our main database okay so i think manu would be a better person to answer this but if you have uh, apis in place i'm sure it will not be a problem to do it uh, manu if you are around you want to pick this up Uh, and and respond that would be great yeah i mean um we will have to look at it so um the data can be made available from us uh, to be pulled into other systems but uh, we don't have a salesforce connector ready made as of now whether to pull in data or you know uh, pull pull the data out or pull the data in for like you know use in service Well, not it doesn't need to be necessarily online even if it goes and stays in your database from where we can then pull it into uh, salesforce right we, we will have to look into it on a case by case basis right now uh, we don't have that but it is possible uh, since salesforce does allow you to you know export the data via api so we can look into it but right now we haven't uh, you know exposed that option at all Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Manu. Uh, Dikshna says, "Can the dashboard be created for different stakeholders?" Uh, yes, we can create dashboard for different stakeholders, and these dashboards can be open, which means that they don't need to log in necessarily to this. To this, you can also create dashboards, which can be embedded onto your website for people to see. Right? That's um, also possible. I just wanted uh, to ask you another question. Like I don't know whether I was sort of uh, Santosh. I was clear. See, what happens is we are a small artisanal business. Okay, so what typically we do is that we uh, interact with the artisans. We try to measure the impact that we are doing on them, and then we create uh, uh, create workshops with them. We do uh, training for them. Then we do products with them, and then. the entire project uh, product life cycle you know like when we do the products then then it is kind of an we have a team of around 12 to 15 people where the internal data is required as in where the product is coming from how fast it can go and then our final stakeholder would be the customer you know so what i am trying to say is that it's it's starting from uh say the artisan impact part of it to us our internal systems how do we regularize that and how does the uh and 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 we also want that the customer data so uh, so i meant different stakeholders like this so can this be covered through your app or uh, through data ogram so that was my question basically right dakshina um so interesting point so what i un- what i understand is the uh, correct me if i'm wrong is broadly you want to is, is it like a demand supply match off uh, that you want to do or the journey of uh, of of the craft from point a to point b you want yes. that i think the second one is what i'm looking at more you know okay. because we do have a lot of data we use uh, google sheet to do that uh, but overall can be sort of i'm like looking at a dashboard which you know uh, very miraculously will put 
uh, everything together. That's, I think, where uh, we would uh, like that kind of an input. Yes. OK, so maybe we can take this offline to understand this better. Hmm. Uh, and then we'll be able to suggest uh, you know the best course of action if that's okay with you. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Santosh, can I come in here? Yes, please. This is Anjali. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, so basically, in a in a program, if there are two or three simultaneous activities for which we need data, one could be say a baseline end line. Another could be tracking children's progress, and the third could be tracking the teacher's progress. Um, so, can it all all these three can it be uh, done uh, on this this platform? And therefore, I want to look at it from the point of view of also the uh, setup cost, etc. So, if thirteen thousand is what you have said with a monthly subscription, so how would it work in terms of the cost? Uh, I just want to understand. Sure. So the answer to your first question, Anjali, is yes. So we have got programs running where multiple, uh, multiples, if I were to use the term stakeholders, were to mm -hmm. give their inputs and they all pull all the information pools in together uh, and you're able to um, decide and, and, and see. Um, in terms of the in terms of the pricing, again, 15,000 is not the monthly costing. The way we break up the pricing is two parts. Okay, there is an actual cost that we have, like like what the primary uh, thought process is that we want to be an extension of the organization, so that the organization does the the NGOs don't have to go and and you know focus on retaining tech talent, identifying te tech talent, and you know operating in those areas. Yeah. So what we say is, okay, you want to create a form. You want it hosted on the application access control. We will take care of all of that for which we will charge you a one time fee, which okay. is what you saw 15,000. And usually that is for 50 questions. So we can take it offline in terms of what is the quantum of question, etc. And we can offer your pricing. But what we show, showed is that about uh, 50 questions. Okay? okay. After which monthly we charge 1,500 rupees. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that is that is again for support everything so ensuring that the app is up and running the database is secure is is ready you get all all what you are expecting from the app application is always available to you and my tr team is also available to you at all points in time right okay. Okay. and you can you can build on it as your requirement scales up sure so that is how we have done it yeah and as we as the requirement scales up we obviously will have discounts to ensure that this is a bit more accepting uh, you know and pocket friendly from your perspective Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, uh, Manu, will you be pasting the form link yeah, again? I will. I will. Have you done that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So the form link is back. Sorry for the glitch, everyone. We just tried to put this together last minute so that you know it was useful for everyone. So if you could just click on this, I hope it is opening for everybody now. Sandosh, you can share your screen. I am. Yeah. So I will request everybody to click on register and fill in as much data as you feel like filling in and click on the submit button. I will talk you through the save as draft feature after this is done. certain mandatory fields, please fill it in. So for education and so mathematics, one is not able to fill, is it? So uh, 
yeah mathematics we would have deact we have not made it active maybe so yeah but we can activate that i mean that's not a problem let me just check once again manu is a math piece uh, uh, so it's yeah it's age greater than uh, eight age greater than eight okay it's for age greater than eight okay so eight would be say let's say 2012 right okay so if you have for anything before more than eight then the math skill shows up and depending if you select maharashtra then marathi comes if you select up then it is hindi so it is conditional so one question that you had of skip logic so we'll wait for a couple of more minutes after which i'll take you to the update feature Done. You can just ping or just say it is done, so we get to know that some of you are finished. Okay. Great. Nice. So the next thing that we will cover is um, the update part. Here is the longitudinal part that we spoke about. So if you click on update and you put the child ID as one or two, we have two child, two children, children. <laughs> so in my case, I've taken two. So once you cover this, you will see that the child's name is automatically populated. All the data about the child from the system gets pulled out, and you can update this information. This is what we were mentioning about longitudinal survey. So the system picks up the data from the last submission for you to update. So you know where you are, and then you can hit the submit button. the rest the rest is the same okay so the things you would have observed here is skip logic is skip logic based on what you are selecting the respective fields open up based on your state selection your district opens up based on the birthday the age open opens up i saw somebody say negative i'm not sure if that is corrected but if that would that would have been a error uh, we we fix that as well so you don't get negative age and that error pops up uh multiple district uh, is is there and you have got uh, this um now when it comes to update like i shared the system is able to pull data from the back end and say okay hey this is the name of the of the child so you can then fill up the information right uh now i would just cover save as draft save it save as draft works really well when you have field officer who need to um say they are and they are having a long conversation with the beneficiary and for some for some reason the conversation get disrupted so you can click on save as draft and you can call it um, say it's a good as we see and i'm just going to save it that record can be pulled from the system again and you can fill it other use cases are when field officers need 
some clarification from their team leads. So usually, when at the end of the day they huddle, um, that's the time they open up the cases where they had doubts, open up all the drafts, fill it, and submit it. So broadly, that's how the form is looking, right? Um, moment you're filling in the form, the data gets automatically updated in the uh, dashboard real time. So if you have set some sort of a target for enrollment, for example, so you have kept a target of 300 children for enrollment in Maharashtra. Right now, you know you're at 77 and you need to push yourself. Similarly, for UP, how many have you entered? If you want to know how many submissions have happened at a state level, that gets updated real time. In this case, if you want to know at district level how many submissions have happened, that information is also there. This is one type of you know broad level insight. Now is to go deeper uh, with this basic information. You know that in in Maharashtra there are uh, you know how how are children faring in mathematics? Basis based on the survey, what we see is that children in Mumbai are there about closer to this. 3.9 and children in Kolhapur are there about 3.4. In case of Marathi, you see that they are closer to you know 3.4 and uh, Marathi is here, so yeah, that's 3.8. Uh, yeah, 3.79. 3 so you get that insights as well. And this is taking a smaller data set. You can obviously uh, see it much better with a larger larger data set. Things get much easier and clearer. Um, Similarly, if you want to see the overall score distribution, you get to know, okay, in Maharashtra, which state, you know, they, if you see that, okay, there are a couple of cases which are at one, however, the spike la largely, you see that there's a huge difference which has been bought in here, um, as well as here, three and four, you see fewer numbers, most of them are skewed towards two, so you're able to maybe take some decision based on this. Um, same thing with UP, you are able to see that particular information. If you see here, if you want to see any sort of a red flag, if it is going below a certain threshold, that can get automatically, that can get uh, highlighted by itself for you to quickly pick up. Okay, this is where I need to focus on. And finally, you have the raw data, which you can, again, filter. You can filter based on, say, Maharashtra. And you can get that data. This data can be downloaded as a CSV and kept at your at any point in time. You can do the same filter. And like this, there are various filters of date, state. Just for demo of this demonstration purpose, we have shown you, uh, you know, these couple of options. So, so yeah, I, I hope you've got like a look and feel from an experiential perspective of what it will be like. Uh, so happy to take. Let me probably just switch and see if there are any questions. Uh, okay. Yeah. If you can, you can. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask. Any questions so far? Okay. Hello. Okay. Thank you so much. I think. Uh, uh, Santosh, you have a question. Sure. Okay. One question. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so, can we also track the daily target given uh, to the um, data collectors, and that can also be tracked through the dashboard or something like that? Daily yes, target uh, with respect to the, how much? Yeah. You can. You can. If you. If you are any any data you are capturing can be measured against your target. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Okay. I um yeah, Akila Rinju, I've managed to stick to the time. Yes. Uh, if you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer. Who creates a dashboard, Natasha? It's a great question. Like we said, we create the dashboard and we we become like your extended tech arm. We create a dashboard, we create the forms. Uh, so yeah, we take care of all of that. You don't need to worry at all.
Great. So uh, if there are any other questions, please feel free to unmute yourselves and ask your questions, or you can shoot it in the chat box as well. Uh, meanwhile, Rinju has dropped in a form uh, to get connected to Dataogram. They have a special discount at the all, for all Tech for Good partners. Uh, so please do fill in the form uh, if you wish to get connected to the team, have further conversations with them, uh, talk about your case studies more in detail. Um, we'd be happy to connect you. Super. Thank you so much for being patient with us. I know there have been some glitches, but I'm, I'm glad you, you know, were patient. Thank you so much. And I hope this was helpful. Um, you can um, reach us at any point in time if you need any sort of support. It doesn't necessarily have to be commercial. Feel free to reach us if you need any, um, and if you want to catch up on anything, we are always available. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Santosh and Manu, uh, for a fantastic session uh, and for making it so interactive. Uh, thank you so much for your time again. Um, we have another uh, question. Just, um, yeah, Santosh, you want to take that from Natasha? Yeah, um, okay. So, Natasha, okay. Biggest benefit for using Datagram over Google Form? That's a very interesting question. So, first of all, Google Form does not operate offline. Uh, second of all, these are things that we have faced, uh, you know, from a, uh, from, a, from, a, from from feedback as well. Google Form does not give you the necessary access control that you may be, uh, you know, looking at because if you're looking at scale, that kind of way there. Uh, in terms of the data visualizations, Google Form gives you basic slices of uh, of the data that you have collected. But if you want to get into deeper, like for example, if you want to compare. Hey, where am I against my target? Or, or um, which age group is performing better in mathematics? You know, you will not be able to get those kind of correlations um, in Google Form as well. Um, in terms of the skip logics and the complexity that we can handle, uh, and that is needed, uh, the Google Form will not be able to take care of that. Uh, we also rely, you know, we also use Google Form. It's not that it is a, it's, it's not the right fit. It kind of solves a lot of problem, but it completely depends on you and your use case. Uh, but depending on the complexity, if it is multilingual, offline, it, it, it is, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a bit of a thing. Yes, survey CTOs, O survey is great. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, but yeah, you need to have the, uh, the people to manage it. So what we are saying is we take care of everything at our end. You don't need to bother about what structure of data to create. We will ensure and we, we advise our clients also what is the right way to take things forward. Yeah. So I hope I'm, I'm able to you know answer your question. Natasha. Yeah. OK. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah. Sure. So Suresh has asked a question. Yes, uh, Suresh, uh, Suresh. So all of this, uh, the PPT and uh, the PDF about the tool features will be shared with the entire cohort. Um, uh, Santosh, uh, if you could share that. I will you. share it. I'll share it with you and you can then in order to pass it to you. Sure. Sure. The subscription fees as well, Suresh. We'll absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, please do fill in the form to get connected to Datagram uh, to avail the special Tech for Good discount or to have a conversation with them. Thank you for, so much for joining us today. We'll see you in the next session.